What's up, Simonics? Welcome to a new special episode because this week we are going to talk about interesting topics like server-side rendering and pre-rendering. I recently got into this topic after a great post uh, by Mike on the official Ionic blog, which proved that it's now possible with Ionic to use server-side rendering. I know Angular Universal existed for quite some time and people already used this kind of th stuff with Angular, but I always feared to actually get into this topic. I was It was completely magic to me, I have to be honest. I finally jumped into this, um, after two days I got more questions than answers and because I was so confused about all of this and now I kind of feel like I start to get an idea of what all of this is about and why it is so great. I wanted to show you um, the general ideas of server-side rendering and pre-rendering, why this is different to uh, the general Angular hosting of a single page application or just the client-side rendering we usually have. And finally talk about uh, which of these uh, techniques might be the right for your specific application or situation. Okay, let's start by taking a look at why we actually talk about this whole topic. If you run a regular Angular Ionic application as a website, so in this topic we are completely talking about websites or progressive web apps, not really mobile applications, then usually if you just host it, um, the application or the browser requests the server resources for whatever page, the server will return a lot of JavaScript, CSS and HTML files, the browser will then try to render them, Angular takes over and Angular will handle the rest of your application. So if you navigate any further into the application, everything is handled by Angular. That's the idea of single page applications, SPA, or also referred to in this context as client-side render, CSR. This is completely different from how it was in the past. Um, just think about PHP. Regularly you had a lot of PHP files on the server, you would request the server, the server would populate an HTML file based on the PHP file and return it. If you returned another URL on the domain, um, once again, request to the server, populate HTML, send it back. So the improvements of an SPA is that it runs on the client side, it's faster um, than just requesting once uh, or over and over again the server with files. But today the problem is that these SPAs can get kinda big, which means the first load of the page is very slow. And also, if we inspect uh, the page source of a regular Angular Ionic application, it will look like this. And the problem is that it will look like this to um, not only us right now, but also like Google or other search engines crawling your page. Google is kinda okay at executing JavaScript, but basically every other search engine isn't, as far as I know. And therefore, you won't really uh, rank high with an Angular application that looked like this. You can't really have dynamic meta tags. Sharing this application uh, using meta information is basically impossible since you can't really fill anything of this. So as a result, uh, pre-rendering and server-side rendering came up and became more popular in the recent time. Let's first of all take a look at, um, let's get started with pre-rendering. I don't want to get into the coding today, um, this is just a vlog where we want to talk about the general topic. Uh, we can make a tutorial about all these things in the future if you want to do, so leave a comment and then also subscribe and like the video while you're at it. So the idea of pre-rendering is that um, Angular will go through your route, uh, look at all of them and try to generate a static HTML file. Now, of course, I made a, a little bit more uh, interesting example since I wanted to show the WordPress post from an API, which is with pre-rendering a bit more difficult, more on this in the end. Um, but what I did is I actually created a routes file where I told Angular about specific routes in my application. So if you have a dynamic ID like I did right here with posts ID, you could tell Angular, okay, these actually exist. And once you run the pre-render command with a routes file, Angular will render all of this. And let's take a quick look what we got as a result. We got a post folder with these three uh, folders, each of them having an index page 
which now uh, that was my intention looks like this so there's a lot of content CSS and uh, to the bottom actually the real content of my post from the API included in this page as a result so pre, this is the pre-render stuff. I um, used this and deployed it directly to Firebase. I don't need any server, that's like static hosting. Um, and as a result, uh, let's quickly reload the page and take a look at the page source. You see a completely different picture. We got a nice page title, um, we got a lot of styling injected and at some point we also, let's search for Twitter. Right here, we got all the meta information and the SEO text injected in that page. So that means if I would use this URL, which is now a real web URL, and put it right here, uh, we can see a nice preview on Google. We can see a Facebook card uh, having the right title and information and also for Twitter. So if someone would now share this URL, it would actually look like this. And the reason is that with pre-rendering, we're basically with the first uh, load of this page, access this file from the server. It's like PHP in the past. Um, so the server returns this file and after the file and all the other JavaScript is loaded, Angular will actually take over on the client side. So now uh, the further routing and everything else that's happening in this application is still using Angular. So now we got the loading times, uh, just like with a regular application. But if I would reload this page, you can see that it actually loads quite fast because the server is making the request and with a bit of additional technique, um, we're able to fetch the data only in the server and the server will actually write the JSON data from the WordPress API into the source code of this page. So I can show you this at the bottom of this page where it says server app state. So right here is the JSON response from the WordPress API injected. And on the server side, it is only read uh, on the client side it is only read from there and then used within the page. So um, there's really there are really a lot of topics like this uh, state transfer API you know, around the topics of pre-rendering and server-side rendering. But let's go back because uh, I don't want to waste your time. This is pre-rendering. Static files, first content load is pretty fast, but you need to know about your routes up front. Um, it's like um, perhaps creating a simple static page for a local agency, a dentist, anything like this, where the content isn't changing a lot of times and you in general know about all the routes or you can somehow extract them from a database and write them to a file or just leave it to the Angular guest parser to find out the routes in your application. Routing, still super simple, I just hosted this on Firebase, would work on any other hosting. Now, I also um, went into server-side rendering, let me find it. Um, the actual difference is with server-side rendering and you now got a file right here. Uh, well, you got an app server module, you got a main server TS uh, that starts your server and the actual interesting stuff is right here. You really have an express server now running which will serve all your files and dynamically render the HTML. Um, this is really something I needed to figure out in the beginning, the difference between server-side rendering and pre-rendering. So for pre-rendering, you request the server and the server instantly basically returns the page that was previously generated. For server-side rendering, you request a page from the server and as you can see, the server will on the fly render and hydrate your page, perhaps inject or pre-populate the data in the page by making an additional API request in the background and then send this HTML back to the client. From the client side, it looks the same. Both of them will get a nice HTML page with SEO tags, meter information, everything included, but the general approach is a bit different. So server-side rendering is a bit more dynamic. And as a result of all of this, you need to run your own server. So you can't just uh, host the static files on Firebase anymore. What I did is I uh, pushed this to Heroku. Uh, the application is now basically running on Heroku uh, right here. And I think 
the performance um, compared to my other two examples isn't the best because um, Heroku is actually in free um, not that powerful I would say still we could use the URL I think it's different so yeah pre-render web app is Firebase and this here is Heroku app we could once again use this and get a preview and now I haven't even defined all the posts so in my uh, routes file you saw I defined like three routes Let's go to the bottom uh, and use something from the past, whatever, uh, this one with universal links. And let's use our meta text check and we see it works. So this is now a lot easier for dynamic data. We don't know uh, how many IDs are there for our WordPress posts, but since we set the meta text on the server side and the server is also making the requests for us, um, using once again the transfer state and then calling set meter to set all the information in my case from the WordPress API we got all the meter information included in the page source just like before with uh, no that's not what I wanted uh, page source um, just like before with pre-rendering it looks basically the same if you inspect it like this uh, somewhere here is our meter information so it's kind of the same but still a bit different both pre-rendering and server-side rendering um return this finished html to the client and once angular is loaded in the background the page uh, itself might update um well usually you don't really notice the update but angular takes over and you don't really make any further server requests it's really just about this first um paint of the view I had Lighthouse running, uh, actually my pre-rendered version um, did kind of fine in the report. Uh, the problem was I can't really compare it now to Heroku since the free hosting isn't very powerful. So for server-side rendering you really need a powerful server because otherwise you just have a different problem. Um, it becomes really bad. Um, yeah, I did this like five times and got five times different results now. Usually the pre-rendered version gets really the best scores right here. But this was just a basic example. Now, uh, finally, after talking about pre-rendering and server-side rendering, um, there's also now Scully, a static site generator for Angular apps. I couldn't really make it work uh, with Ionic so far. I had a few issues, um, but the promise is a better uh, way to generate pre-rendered pages, so a static application with Angular. Uh, Scully gets a lot of love from the community as far as I know. Um, you can give it a try. Um, I really don't know um, how much better it is compared to the Angular Universal pre-rendering process because I found that kind of okay as well with the routes. Um, really don't know what is the main difference between it, um, but keep an eye on Scully in the uh, future, which might be a nice addition to generate static Angular applications. So we've now seen the difference between the standard application, the standard Angular Ionic application with this source code and the pre-rendered and server-side rendered version um, using just Angular Universal. It's really easy to set it up. Um, there's a schematic to set it up. I will also bring out a tutorial soon. A new course should be inside the Ionic Academy, I think. So if you want to know more about this topic, definitely get started with it. There are not too many resources on Scully yet, so that's maybe why I have the problem, because I'm just good at Googling. But you can definitely try out both of the other approaches and just see for yourself what you enjoy about them or um, if they might suit your cases better when you need a lot of SEO or crawlability, if that's a good word, from uh, search engines to rank your pages higher. All right, and now the most important question, which of these techniques is the right for your application? And as always, it completely depends. If you have like just a login and a register page and everything else is hidden behind uh, authentication, well, then just go for a standard uh, Angular SPA. There are no benefits of pre-rendering or server-side rendering in that case, since um, these pages anyway can't be crawled or indexed by Google, um, so there's not really any benefit. If you have like a static page with, let's say for a dentist or something, like a client that you generate a page for, 
and the information isn't going to change very often, then I would uh, really recommend to go with pre-rendering or perhaps Scully if you can make it work. Because pre-rendering generates static files, um, you still get the benefits of having Angular in these files uh, after the application is loaded. You will have SEO tags, um, you will get nice social cards if somebody wants to share the dentist information and you don't really need to change this uh, a lot since the information is just static and won't change often. In other cases where you have like dynamic data, perhaps user generated content or uh, in general more uh, specific requirements, you can try server side rendering which allows to um, let the HTML page be rendered on the server side and hydrated and uh, also uh, pre-populated with the data that you might have fetched from an API on that side. But always make sure or keep in mind that for server side rendering you really need a powerful server and not just a, a tiny free version of anything. I hope you enjoyed this episode on performance gains with server side rendering, pre-rendering. I hope my kind of basic uh, information about this topic helped you to also get a nice understanding about these subjects because uh, as I said, I always uh, looked at it and felt it was complete magic and couldn't understand how it actually works. But now I hope that you have at least a solid foundation if somebody's talking about pre-rendering or server-side rendering that you know the basic differences between them and you have an opinion about which of these to use. Go out this week, uh, try one of these tools, for example Scully or just use Angular Universal. There will also pretty soon be a new course in the Ionic Academy, actually it might be already released on Ionic everywhere, including server-side rendering and hosting your application. So if you are into Ionic and want to check it out, go to the Ionic Academy and I would love to see you inside. Have a great week with static or dynamic static pages and I will catch you next week like always. So happy coding, Simon.